Carpenter's Ministry presents this refreshing and life-changing teaching. We trust that this message will be a blessing to you. Now this is our mandate for the next 30 years. And you're all going to be alive and well. Your children will all be alive and well. Your grandchildren will all be alive and well to carry out this mandate. Glory be to God. If you believe that with no fear here, let me hear a loud shout of praise. We made it to the end of 2020. And we're going to do what Jesus has in store for us from, not just in 2021, but from 2021. Hallelujah. Sometime earlier this, this year, the later part of this year, God told us about the season of Joseph. Remember that? That was the Hallelujah week, I believe. Was it? Yeah. He told us about greatness, about promotion, about expanded influence, and about abundant provision. And, you know, meditating on that prophecy, it became clear that he was pointing us towards 2021. Amen. And incidentally, it was on all fours with something we had been talking about towards 2021 already by that time. So God began to direct it more clearly towards what he had in store for us in 2021. We all know the story of Joseph. Most of us know the story of Joseph. Joseph was... His story is found from Genesis 37 all the way down to 41, 42, and so on. Let me just read um, a few, just a few portions, just some quick things to remind you. It tells us in 37, 3, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even the more. So what happened to Joseph after that? His brothers took him, threw him in a pit, sold him into slavery, he went into Egypt, he went to Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife lusted after him, wanted to have sex with him, tricked him, and he got thrown into prison. In the prison he met the butler and the baker, and eventually, he got thrown out, he got rescued, rather, from prison when Pharaoh sent for him. And he eventually became prime minister of Egypt, second only to Pharaoh. Is that true? Look at Psalm 105, 17, kind of summarizes it. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons until the time... Everybody say until the time, that's until the season, that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. He made him lord of his house 
and ruler of all his possessions, to bind his princes at his pleasure, to teach his elders wisdom. So if we were to look at Joseph and ask what is the CV of Joseph, what would you say his CV is? And when we go through his CV, I'm pretty sure you can find yourself somewhere in that CV. He was a little child, just 17 years old or less, and he had big dreams. True? He was a son that was loved and favored by his father. He was a brother whose dreams brought opposition and envy from his brothers. He was a victim of persecution. Is that beginning to sound like somebody you know yourself? He was an epitome of integrity. Those are some of the things you can begin to say about Joseph. He was a servant. He served at every opportunity. That's who Joseph was. He was a recipient of divine favor that always came on time. He was a leader who took his time to develop his leadership skills whenever he could. He was somebody who touched abundance and therefore he was a provider to a lot of people. These are all the things you can begin to say about Joseph. But let me tell you something else about him. He was somebody whose influence grew and grew and grew and grew. He was someone whose influence expanded and expanded and expanded. And when you look at the dreams of Joseph, the dreams of Joseph didn't just say that Joseph would be great or that he would be greater than his brothers. The dreams of Joseph in the order in which they came spoke that Joseph would go from great to greater and greater. The first dream was just him and his brothers, as it were. The next dream included the sun and the moon and the stars. So Joseph's dream spoke that he was going to get greater and greater and greater. Listen to me, church. That is the signature of God. God's signature is increasing increase. God's signature is abounding abundance. God's signature is expansion that keeps expanding. God's signature is growing influence. There is never any stagnation where God is involved. Did you hear me? There is never any stop or slow down. Or like they said, there is never any recession where God is involved. It is the signature of God to have increasing increase, unending promotion, abounding abundance, extending borders, expanding influence. Who believes that? I can hear you. Who believes that? Listen to me, church. When you remember how Jesus spoke to his disciples when he was telling them about the Holy Spirit, listen to what he said. And tell me if you don't see the same pattern with Joseph. In Acts chapter 1, verse 4, it says, Being assembled together, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. So where were they? Church. Where were they? He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. So church, where were they? Jerusalem. But to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Verse 8, now listen. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. In where? Jerusalem. Did it stop there? I can't hear you. And in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Look at it from the CEV translation. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and everywhere in the world. CCC, you will tell everyone about him. Not just in Port Harcourt or in Nigeria or in West Africa, but everywhere in the world. That is the signature of God. That is the mandate of God. 
Listen to it from the Waymouth translation. And yet you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the remotest parts of the earth. TCC, that is why we have the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me, church? Because you have the power of the Holy Spirit, there is no stagnation in your life. There is no stagnation in your impact. There is no going back in your influence. He says you will start from a little classroom in Elekoya, and you will move, and you will move, and you will move from your Jerusalem. You will not stay in your Jerusalem. You will go to your Judea, and you will grow to your Samaria, and you will move to the remotest parts of the earth. That is the signature of God. There is nothing in your life, I prophesy to you, in 2021, that will be in the same place that it was in in 2020. Because of this mandate, and because of this power of God, and because this is the signature of God over your life, every single area of your life, there will be progression. There will be increase. There will be an extension of borders. There will be an expansion of your influence. There will be greater greatness. There will be abounding abundance. What you think you have touched in 2020 will be nothing compared to what God has in store for you in 2021. Glory be to God. I want to hear you shout if you believe that. I want to hear you receive that if that is a commission and a mandate you hear from Jehovah himself. Enough of Jerusalem. There was a time I told you not to depart from Jerusalem. Once I sent you the Holy Spirit, you had to move from Jerusalem. You could no longer stay there. By the power of that Holy Spirit, the mandate changed and it was no longer staying put in Jerusalem. It was no longer stay put in Port Harcourt. It was move, move, move to your Judea. Find your Samaria and get to the remotest parts of the earth because that is what the power of the Holy Spirit has been given to you for. Glory be to God. That is why the prophecy then said, the time was now, but it didn't start now. When you find yourself stretching into your Judea and your Samaria and your uttermost parts of the earth, in whatever area of your life, don't for one minute be deceived into thinking it started in 2021. It didn't. And if we look at the story of Joseph, maybe that's better. If we look at the story of Joseph, let us begin to look and see how that's his territory of influence grew and expanded. Are you following me, church? Are you following me, church? Let's see how it began. It began from ruling in his dreams. Do you know that he had influence even just when he had his dreams? It began from ruling in his dreams. Joseph's dreams had an impact on his brothers. It was negative, but his dreams also had an impact on his father. That was positive because the Bible says the father kept those words, the same words the brothers hated him for. Two reactions. Two reactions. His brothers reacted negatively. His father kept it in his heart. Don't ever judge the validity and the efficacy of your dream by anyone's reaction to it. I'll say it again. That dream that is taking you to your Judea and your Samaria and to your uttermost parts of the earth, don't ever judge the efficacy of your dream or the validity of your dream by the reactions of men alone. Some men will find you irritating. Some people will laugh at you. Some will oppose you. Some will be envious of you. 
Some will think you are just plain silly. Like I've told you so many times about Pastor Charles, and Pashala repeated it on Sunday, of how those days in our Jerusalem in Eleko here, in a little nursery classroom, Pastor Charles would be preaching like he was preaching to 5,000 people. And sometimes we were five in church. That's why all these young pastors who will be whining about having a few people in church. What do you see? How, how powerful is your dream within you? What do you really believe about the pulpit you're standing on? What mandate are you really running with? The man of God will stand without even a pulpit in a little nursery classroom in his Jerusalem. But he knew the validity and the efficacy of his dream. And he would preach like the clock was ticking. And he would preach, you even saw him when he preached on stage here. He would preach like there was a time clock ticking. Like he had something to finish, which apparently he did. You never judge the impact of your dream by what people have to say about it. That dream is just the beginning. It's just the Jerusalem, and it's taking you to the remotest parts of the earth. No matter how far-fetched your dream may look, listen to me, church. It's having more impact and more influence than you realize. It's actually influencing people. There are people who hear you talk, and they turn around, and they walk away, and they keep what you said in their heart. It may be years later that you will eventually hear how their lives were changed by just something they saw that you did or something they saw that you said. I'll say it again. Never look down on the impact and the influence your dream is having. Do you know why? Because that dream is wired with potential to fulfill itself. You didn't hear me. That dream you have is wired with potential to grow and to expand. If it is a dream that came from God, it is wired with the potential. That is why no matter the setback, no matter the setback that ever comes against you, church, your dream will not die. I will say it again. And that was really the story of Joseph. But it didn't stop with setbacks. The story of Joseph went from setback to setups. Every time there was a setback in his life, it was a setup for something else. 2020 was full of setbacks. It was a great year for us, but there were many setbacks. A lot of us had setbacks in our businesses. We had setbacks in our relationships, some of us. We had apparent setbacks in church. Apparent, it looked like, if you're looking at numbers. But listen to me, church. When Joseph got thrown into the pit, what happened? They sold him into slavery and took him to where? To where? They took him to the place of his destiny. Your setback many times is a setup for your destiny. Your setback many times is a step from your Jerusalem to your Judea. Your setback many times is a step from your Judea to your Samaria. Your, step, your setback many times is a step from your Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. What do you do when you're thrown into the pit? What do you do when there is a setback? What do you see? He was a slave, but he was in Egypt. He was in a place he had apparently dreamt about, but did not know. And then he got to Egypt, and it so happened that he went to Potiphar's house. And what happened next? His influence increased. His influence increased. No longer was he influencing his brothers and his father in dreams. It now became tangible. In Potiphar's house, what did Joseph testify to the wife? There is no one greater in this house than me. 
that is influence. But that wasn't even the end of it. That was just probably his Judea. And then Polyphar's wife came, wanted to sleep with him. And then what happened? Another setback. Another one. How many of us have had one setback after another? One setback. And sometimes you begin to believe silly things that people who want to put you in bondage teach you. Tell yourself, every setback in my life is a setup to my next level. Every setback in my life is a setup to expansion. I am moving from my Jerusalem to my Judea to my Samaria. I am going from the pit. And I may get back into the prison, but I'm making it to the palace. Glory be to God. Because when is my season? It may be now, but it didn't start now. Can I hear a shout of praise? And so he gets to the prison. <laughs> and he probably thinks, okay, I'll soon be out of here. Church, he was in the prison for like 12 years. In fact, first of all, he was in the prison for 10 years. Then after 10 years, you know what God does to you? God begins to send you destiny helpers. When you are in your place of setback, if you keep your eyes on your dream and understand that your influence is growing, God begins to send you destiny helpers. Who were his destiny helpers? The butler and the baker. The Bible says it so happened that they were brought to the same prison. And it so happened that Joseph was put in charge of them. It didn't so happen. It was a signature of God moving him, increasing increase, extending borders, abounding greatness, expanding influence. God, and that is how God has moved this ministry in 30 years. And the next 30 years will be even greater. Glory be to God. And while he was there after 10 years, the butler got released. And another setback happened. The butler forgot him for another two years. How many of us have had men forget us? People make promises to you. Even as a church, People promise you all kinds of things. But they leave and they forget you. Church, in 2021, it doesn't matter how many men have forgotten you. God does not forget. As long as you do not forget your dream and you do not let go of your dream, I say to you that God does not forget. And the Bible says, after Two full years, the word came to pass. His influence expanded. And what happened? The king sent for him. And he came out of prison. And he moved to the next level. And that level was now in Pharaoh's place. He wasn't just put, listen, over Pharaoh's house. He was put over the entire nation of Egypt, and therefore over the entire world. TCC, as a church and as individuals, I am here to tell you the good news. The good news is that dream came from God. The good news is that vision that people laughed at, God gave it to you. The good news is every setback has simply been a stepping stone, a setup to the next level for your life. The good news is that the signature of God is expansion, is growth, is promotion, is movement from one level to another. The good news is that there is no stagnation when it comes to God. The good news is that God has great and awesome plans for you in 2021. Can I hear you give him a shout of praise? I cannot hear you give him a shout of praise. I can't hear you give him a shout of praise. So it doesn't matter. Some of you came to church tonight. 
very conscious of the confined space you have been in. You've been in a confined space. Maybe in your relationships. You've been in a confined space. Maybe in your business. You've been in a confined space. In your career. You've been in a confined space. In some pit. That pit is taking you to Egypt. You've been in a confined space. In some prison. In that prison, there's a butler waiting to meet you. There is a destiny helper position just for you. You've been in a confined space where it looks like men have forgotten you. God hasn't forgotten you. You've been in a confined space. That place is taking you to the palace. And in the palace, you won't just be in charge of the responsibilities of your company. You will be the one that the company will say, if you are not the one that runs this department, nobody else can run it. It will be you that the CEO will say, if he does not talk to the clients, nobody else should talk to the clients. That is basically what Pharaoh did. He put Joseph in charge of his entire house. And then he put him over the entire nation of Egypt. Egypt is symbolic of the world system. Get ready to touch areas that unbelievers have only been the ones operating in. Some of you have relinquished certain areas of your believers. Oh, there is a cabal in this country. It is those from the north who control this. We cannot go into the oil field section. Oh, we can't go into the media. The media is controlled by the US. This one is controlled by the south. This one is... What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Joseph was put in charge of Egypt. Egypt is symbolic of the world system. We are really breaking through. And we are breaking out of all those limitations. In 2021, God has moved our influence. In 2021, we are no longer staying in our Jerusalem. In 2021, we are breaking into our Judea. In 2021, your business is moving from Jerusalem to Judea. In 2021, your ministry is expanding from Judea to Samaria. In 2021, your marriage is growing from that Jerusalem it has been in. And it's breaking out into its Judea and its Samaria. In 2021, your influence is going beyond dreams and is going into tangibility. And men will bow before you. Men will listen to your wisdom. Men will say, TCC, there is none discerning and wise as you. For the word of the Lord is in your can I hear you give him a shout of praise? I want to hear you shout. And so, church, are you ready? Are you ready? There is no stagnation. Are you ready? And so, it is our pleasure, it is our excitement, are you ready, do you want to hear what it is, to welcome you to 2021, our year of expanded influence. Expanded, 
Stretch your arms wide. Expand it. And as you stretch your hands wide, turn yourself around. And shout it. Shout it. Shout it. Shout it. Shout it. Shout it. Our season is now, but it didn't start. Yeah, I want you to visualize it. It's beyond Port Harcourt. It's beyond that little room where your business is now. It's beyond those few people that you've had influence over. Is beyond ruling and reigning in dreams. For the power of the Spirit of God in you is in you to take you from Jerusalem. The mandate has changed. It is no longer do not depart from Jerusalem. Once the Spirit of God came, we have stepped into a new generation. And the mandate, I make bold to say, has changed. Now aggressively, by that spirit, we are moving from Jerusalem. We are taking the good news to Judea. We're moving with the news to Samaria. We're spreading to the remotest parts of the earth. And our influence, there is no pit, there is no prison that can stop us. Destiny helpers have been sent to us. We will recognize those destiny helpers, even in the place of service. And as we move to our places of influence and destiny, abundance that conquers every famine will be placed into our hands. But it will not be placed for us alone. It will be placed for us to be a solution to those that God has brought our way. Only mature people, only strong people are given this kind of mandate. And we have been prepared in 2020. Every pit and every prison that the world called a setback, in TCC, we called it a setup. And now we are ready to run with the mandate. And the mandate is expanded influence. Stretch your hands and turn around. Whichever way you want to expand. If you want more babies, they are here in 2021. You want more employees, they are here in 2021. You want more contracts? They are here in 2021. You want greater ministry gifts? They are here in 2021. 